like to begin by thanking my brother priests who are here today. Thank you so much for uh, showing your support of our church and our men of the diocese. Thank you. And certainly our deacons. As you may notice, there's just two of us who are wearing green today. And the proper color for St. Augustine is, um, or is this Thomas Aquinas? <laughs> <I'm so> <laughs> Thomas Aquinas, excuse me, I'm really getting it. This is your bishop speaking. <laughs> the proper color for the liturgy is white. Uh, Father Mike Schmitz and your bishop is wearing green. I forgot what feast day this was. And of course, Father Mike Schmitz would wear green too because I was his rector for a number of years at the seminary. So he follows his bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Father Michael, thank you for coming. It's a treat to have you with us among us. Thank you. Uh, Thursday, uh, Christian Welp and I had lunch with a gentleman, uh, upper 70s, I would say. And during our, during our conversation at the restaurant, this gentleman said, you know, there came a time in my life, being raised as a cradle Catholic, that I had to decide, do I really believe the Catholic Church? Do I really have faith in the Catholic Church, or is this just a tradition I live out and it doesn't matter? I thought, oh, good question. He said it was much later in his life that he made that, that declaration, this is the church. And I, it's the first time I've heard that articulated, uh, other than what I experienced when I was first year theologian at St. Paul's Seminary. I'd been in the seminary at college for three years, and now I'm a theologian. And I had been away from the church for a number of years, and I kind of came back through an evangelical group, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but I had some commitment work I had to do, and I remember in prayer, it came real clear. Peter, I know you believe in me as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know you believe that. Now what I need you to do is say and entrust yourself to the Catholic Church. If you can't do that, you will never be a good minister of his church, or my church. And I had a hard time doing that. I had a hard time saying, I believe what the Catholic Church teaches and believe. But until I could do that, things are a little off. So I did do it. And I'll tell you what, there's a freedom in that. There's a freedom in committing to that which I know deep down is right. Now, as you know, as I know, our church is not perfect. I think that's part of the problem, why it's hard to commit to something that's not perfect. I remember probably about five years ago, we had a scandal in the Diocese of Superior. One of our Franciscans, 23, 23 years earlier, had fooled around and a woman was pregnant with his son and uh, this son now was dying of cancer and the media picked up on the story is where's the church for this young man dying of cancer so CNN wanted to interview me and I was told when I was at the church where this priest had been and I was uh, trying to bring comfort to the people the CNN is out there waiting for an interview I said tell him fine when mass is finished I will um, spend time with them and the good news is I brought my dog which is kind of a big dog at the time a golden doodle <laughs> very loving loving dog would not hurt a flea I just carried him <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got out of uh, I finished liturgy mass and I, I, I the cameras were there and the interviewer and all that and I said if you don't mind walk with me to the car I've got my dog and I just got to give it a little water he said, no problem. He said, I hope you're not afraid of Dobermans. <laughs> and I opened the trunk of the car, and they're all like backing up. I thought, well, it's nice that the media is on the defensive once in a while. <laughs> uh, Gary Tuckman, you may remember him. I don't know if he's still on CNN. He's uh, Anderson Cooper's right-hand man. He does a lot of national, international stories. He was interviewing me, and then after the interview, I thought, I'm going to ask him a question. Gary... Why do you think that the Catholic Church 
get so much press on the bad stories. Because heaven knows the bad stories are everywhere, my brothers, everywhere. Why does the Catholic Church get singled out over and over and over again? He said, because you're a large institution. I said, that's a correct answer, but it's not the full answer. I'll tell you why I think it is. I think it is if you can weaken in the minds of people who the church is, a church that can teach with authority on faith and morals, a strong chain that's been going on for 2,000 plus years, if you can break that chain, it eases the conscience of those that do not want to bend a knee to God or live consciously with a set of morals, a faith, a way of believing. If you can break that chain, it eases the conscience of others. That was not put in print. <laughs> I always think about King David. My goodness. He was a chosen son of God, right? Son of God for leadership. God's chosen king. He fooled around with Beth Bathsheba, correct? Adultery. Had an illegitimate son. Killed her husband. Plus he had how many hundreds of concubines? What do you need? <laughs> and the Jewish people continue to look at him as a favored son, king of God's plan, which he is. How do we deal with disillusionment how do we, again, move forward with commitment? It's um, not always easy, but I'll tell you this. Travis, I appreciate your words right before Mass about the importance of the family as came through Anna uh, Kreslins from the Carmelite. The importance of the family. Can you imagine saying, if you were married with children, well, really, my neighbors have a much better family. That'd be bizarre. How many of you are salesmen? Can you imagine selling a product and saying, well, really, our competition's product's much better. Good luck selling. <laughs> we need to be sure about our commitment, not only to the Lord, but to his church. And until we do that, we're never gonna have full conviction of what we believe and be able to evangelize as we're called to do. Does that make sense? My brothers, here's the challenge. If you've been a cradle Catholic, but you know you love the Lord, you've made that commitment to him, God bless you, alleluia, praise God, that the spirit moved in you in such a way. But there's gonna be another step if you have not done it. You have to commit to his church. I believe what the church teaches and believes. When you can do that, then you can move forward with much greater strength, conviction, and courage. It's so simple, but so hard. The Lord's gonna ask you to do this because, again, he wants us to stand tall on the mountain of faith, proclaiming what is truth. It's not a bullish thing. It's not a boastful thing. It's the right thing. The Lord has gifted you with faith, and he expects you to use that gift. Be strong in it. I'm a sailor. I love this reading we just heard. Jesus on the boat with the disciples. We're going to cross the Sea of Galilee. We'll get to the other side. And as he slept, a storm blew up, and waves were crashing in, and there was fear that this ship, this boat, was about to sink. They waken the Lord, he calms the sea, he calms the wind, there was peace, and he says, where is your faith? I'm with you. I am with you to the end of the time. The bark of Peter, this ship we're on, will see us through. We may have some storms to face and some winds to quell, waves to hope we get through, but the Lord is with us. If you feel like you have to waken him for that extra strength, go ahead and do so. He's right there. Until we are convinced that this is right, we're not going to have the courage to see it through. The Lord was faithful. We're crossing to the other side. I will be with you. We'll get there. Hang on. It will be kind of fun. I'm right there. Call on me. There'll be peace when you need it. 
There'll be courage, which I give, when you call upon it too. So a little prayer today in the next few days. Please, if you would, um, let the Lord know how much you love him. And let the Lord know that you are committed to that which he established when he formed his church. We love our families. We love our family, the Catholic faith. Without it, I'm not sure where I'd be. I don't know where you'd be. I'm going to conclude with my favorite saint, St. Francis de Sales. And he has a word on this that I think might be, again, helpful for all of us. He says, sometimes, I say all the time, reflect on what you are, a child of the Catholic Church, and rejoice thereupon. The children of that mother, the Church, who desire to live according to her laws, always remain happy. As St. Teresa says, it is a great consolation at the hour of death to be a child of our Holy Mother, the Church. I believe very few Christians on the true Church will be damned because, having the root of true faith, sooner or later it usually yields its fruit, which is salvation. From being dead, they become living by charity, and charity is her gift to each of us. My brother Catholics, thank you for being here. Thank you for the witness of your faith. Let us take that next step up the mountain to the top by committing ourselves to all that has gone before us because it is true, it is right, it is just. God bless you.